And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek. Hey, imagine that you are on a lifeboat. You've been capsized from a cruise ship or a big ship or a fishing ship and you're on a lifeboat with some people and you secretly love some, you secretly hate others. Oh hey, you can actually secretly love and hate yourself. Ooh, what a concept. And what you're doing is trying to save you, yourself, the people that you love, and you're trying to kill the ones that you hate, and there's all sorts of chaos and hand management and negotiations and fighting and woo! How's that sound? Let's check out Lifeboat from Guerrilla Games. It's from two to six players, takes 60 minutes uh, around, and uh, let's check it out, show you how it's played, and I'll give you my final thoughts. To start the game, each person is given one of these characters um, to start the game with. It's randomly given to you, and you basically flip it up and show by who you are. There's six characters. Now, in this game, obviously, you're trying to stay alive. And uh, so, first of all, you get one of these guys. We have two different things. We have a size and a survival. So, and some of them have a special power. The size is how much life you have. So, the captain is and the first mate are really big. He has the most uh, life here. He has eight. And the kid has the least. Now, of course, the mate is just so big, he doesn't have a special ability. It says he's just plain big. Oh, the kid, he can do things, uh, we'll talk about a little bit later, but he can essentially steal cards from people uh, all the time, anytime he wants, and have no ramifications for it. So he's obviously the hardest one to keep alive, but if he survives, it's nine points. Where if this guy survives, it's only four points. So it's somewhat balanced where the stronger the guys are, the less points they get for surviving, and vice versa. And then you have someone who's sort of even, like Frenchie, who's six and six. So each one of these are dealt out to each player, and then we get some interesting cards. Each player is given one love and one hate card. And each of these cards is gonna tell them who they love and who they hate. For example, th if this was us, we would love the captain and we would hate the kid. So what this means is I would get five points if the captain survives, and I would get three points if the kid dies. Now keep in mind that the, the points that they're talking about here are actually the survival points. So if we look at the captain's card, his survival is five, which is why if he lives, because I love him, I get five points, and the kid only has a survival, he has survival of nine, but he only has three damage points, three size. So if he dies, I only get three points because he's easy to kill. So it's quite balanced in this way. So I hate the kid and I love the captain. Secretly, you don't show this to anybody. This is totally secret in the game. Now it is possible to both love and hate yourself. Um, if you love yourself, essentially you're a narcissist and there's nobody else looking out for you, so you would get double the points. So if I was the captain and I loved myself and I lived, instead of getting five, I'd get 10. If I hated myself, I would actually um, get three points for every other person other than myself and the person that I love that dies. Because you pretty much want to kill everybody except the one that you love. And if you love and hate the same person, then it's sort of a, a, a little bit of a wash. You still get points for either one of those. Okay, the start of the game, everyone's given one of these provision cards and it's set up in a sort of specific way from the start game. So you have a navigate, provisions on the front, navigation on the back. This is the front of the boat. This is the back of the boat. The game is played, each round is played in three phases. So first we have the quartermaster phase. So in this phase, this person, the front of the boat, takes one provision card for each player. So they're gonna take four cards and it's drafting. They get to look at these cards, pick one, and pass it to the next person, pass the next person, and the kid will basically get whatever's left over. Here's a sample of four cards. They do different things. Some things help you, some things hurt other people. For instance, a water card. People get thirsty uh, when they do certain things in the game, and this will help them from getting thirsty, which means they don't take damage points. Medical kit allows them to fix themselves damage. A grappling hook allows them to get an additional uh, sort of points when they fight. Same for the blackjack, this is sort of a, a fighting weapon, it's a weapon so that when fights happen, it sort of beefs up their fighting ability. Now after that's done, we go into actions. Now there's a few actions you can take. One is you can do nothing. Sometimes that's actually the best thing to do in this game. Second action you can possibly do is row. When you row, you take two of these navigation cards up, you look at one of them and you select one of them and then you put it face down underneath it. Let's look at what these cards do. So that person would look at these two cards secretly. No one else could see them. There's two things that go on here. We have overboard and we have thirsty. At the top, it tells you which person would go overboard. And here it says 
Frenchie, and here it says the kid. Now sometimes if you're playing with less than six people, there'll be cards that come up that have people that aren't in the game, and then s simply nobody goes overboard. So when they go overboard, essentially they would lose any cards that they had out in front of them, and they lose a damage point unless they have a life preserver. So this hurts people, so you only want to throw people overboard that you either don't care if they live or die, or if they're really the person you hate. Now, one of these has a bird icon. If this ends up being the one selected at the end of the round, a bird icon comes out. When four of these birds come out, the game ends. Thirsty. This tells sometimes specific people, like the captain, the first mate, and the kid. Everyone except Lady Lauren. So sometimes different people get thirsty. Also, sometimes there's rowing and fighting. If you rowed during the turn, like Lady Lauren just did to have a choice of these navigation cards, she would get thirsty and either have to get water and play a water card, or she would take one damage. Same with fighting. We'll show you what fights do later, but if the person has fought during the turn, they would get thirsty. So she would take these two cards. She'd pick one of them. She'd put it face down at the bottom of the navigation deck and the other card the, um, underneath the whole big deck. So let's say she picked this one. This is the one that's in the row pile, and this would go at the bottom of the navigation deck. That's what rowing is. The next is changing seats. So maybe, it, and then we, we, go, we go in order from front of the boat to the end of the boat. And it's the captain's turn, and maybe he wants to change seats with the kid. So he goes, kid, I'm going to change seats with you. Now, the kid can either let that happen, and the captain has now taken the seat, or if he doesn't want it to happen, he can yell fight. And if there's a fight, uh, essentially we have the captain on one side and the kid on the other side. And now negotiations start as to who's going to help me. So the kid's like, hey, dude, somebody's got to help me. I'm only a size three. This guy's a size seven. He's going to crush me. I need somebody's help. Hey, Frenchie, can you help me? And Frenchie might be like, he might not care about the kid and say, well, what do you got for me? And the kid could say, well, I've got some good cards here that might stop you from getting thirsty. I might, I might have some weapons I might could give you. Um, you know, they just negotiate. How about, hey, later on, I'll help you out. It's, it's all up for negotiation. Now, no cards can change hands during a fight. It all happens afterwards. Oh, and by the way, nothing is binding. You can agree to a deal and later on double cross your buddy. So the kid's like, hey, Frenchie, help me. Now, if you hate the kid, hey, Frenchie might jump on the captain's side or not help him at all. But Lady Lara might, might be the one that loves the kid, so she might help him out. So the way the fight's resolved is essentially the people on one side, you add up their size, and you look at it depending on the, the, the defender's size. Now, weapons can come out on either side and help to sizes and things like that. We saw one of the weapons earlier. So maybe the kid has a grappling hook that he throws down, and he has a size of four. Four plus three is seven, so now he matches the captain. And whenever it's a, it's a tie, if it ended like this, the kid would keep his position because the tie always goes to defenders. So maybe the kid had played this, which kind of stays out in front of him, and goes, oh, sorry, captain. Uh, I fought you, and you're going to stay there. So the captain essentially just lost his turn. Frenchie, let's say it's his turn. He can, and another thing you can do is mug somebody. He could take any face-up card in front of somebody or a random card from their hand. So he could actually steal this grappling hook. He knows what it is. Or he could steal somebody else's card that's from their hand as well. And again, if somebody lets a mug it, his turn's over. You could choose to fight against a mug, and then you have a fight again. Now keep in mind, when you fight, um, you, you pretty much... Uh, on your own card you show yourself that you had fought so essentially if you row during the round you take one of these red markers and you put it to the right and if you have fought you put it to the left so at the end of the round when the navigation comes we know who's fought and who has rowed and the last thing you can do uh, is some some cards allow you to play special actions and you can do that as well but let's say the kid just decides to row he picks up two cards he looks at them he puts one on the navigation deck and one on the bottom and that's the end of the action round now we do move on to the navigation round. Whoever's at the back seat at this time takes any cards that are here that have been rowed for. If there's no cards that are rowed, he must just take the single top card and whatever's there has to happen. So he would look at these two cards and he would get to decide who goes overboard and who gets, uh, you know, who, who, who gets thirsty. So maybe he decides to throw Frenchie overboard and every the captain, the first mate, and the kid get thirsty, and anybody that rode got, got, got thirsty. So when you're thirsty, if you don't have a water card or anything that stops you from being thirsty, you get a damage card. If at any point your damage equals your size, you're unconscious, and essentially you can't do anything, you're almost dead. And if your, um, if your amount of damage increases over your size, you're dead and out of the game. Now, if you're dead and you're still in the boat, at the end of the game, you can still win because during the game, you're gonna be getting cards, some of these provision cards that have jewels that give you points and things like that. 
Um, there's all sorts of things that give you points on those provision cards. If you're dead or unconscious, but still in the boat, hey, you can get it. But hey, if you're dead or unconscious, people can mug you and you, there's nothing really you can do about it. But somebody that loves you might be able to do it. And somebody that loves you might be able to give you a medical kit and bring you back from unconsciousness and things like that. So there's a lot of interesting interactions that happen here. But essentially, something happens here. Frenchie goes overboard. He loses a... Uh, he gets a damage. Although, except his special ability is that he gets no damage from falling overboard. Because that's his one special ability. But normally, everybody else would get a damage point. Unless, of course, somebody has one of these life preservers. Now, if this is thrown out in front of somebody, when they go overboard, they do not... Uh, get damage. So these are a pretty pretty good card to have. Also, when someone gets thrown overboard, there's cards like Bucket of Chum, where when you throw this out, an extra shark come out and anybody who was overboard gets an extra damage. So there's all sorts of things that you can throw and play immediately without warning. And there's other things that you have to play for actions. You just have to follow the cards there. So as the game goes on, there's obviously different really interesting interactions that happen. You're trying to figure out who loves you, who hates you. You're trying to do the things that you want to do. And uh, at the end of the game, as long as three birds come out, the game ends. And if you're alive and still in the, or still in the boat, even if you're dead, if you're still in the boat, you haven't been thrown overboard, you open up, uh, you, you take all your provision cards, that would be points, and you flip over who you love and hate, and you add up all the points, and the one who has the most points is the winner. Oh, wow. Well, anybody that's Lifeboat, and everybody that knows, has watched my reviews, knows that I love games that have negotiation in them. Uh, and this game was no, you know, it was no exception to that. I thought it was a, just an awesome game to have a lot of fun. You've got to play with the right group, though. you got to be with people that don't mind that you're going to hurt them. They're not going to mind that you stab them in the back. If you're playing with, you know, tight college Euro gamers, they're probably not going to like this. You gotta play with the right group. But if you get with the right group that's just out to have fun and you know you, you don't mind about you know messing each other over and it's all in the fun and you play with the right group, this game will be a blast. Uh, so if you have that group, you gotta check it out. I, I loved you know I loved that the the negotiation aspect of helping each other fight or not. Um, and what can you give me? What can I give you? And then trying to figure out who loves who and who hates who and you know trying to read people and what they're doing that's fun too. Uh, just all in all, just the way that where, hey, the front of the ship gets you provisions, but the back of the boat lets you navigate, and where are you going to be, and where do you want to be, and, you know, it's just, I just thought it was a very well done game. It's a lot of fun. It's sort of, I wouldn't call it a party game, because there is some thinking involved, but it is sort of like a glorified party game, and if you go into it thinking that way with the right group, it's going to be a blast. Um, if there were any negatives, I'd say it's, you know, the, the rules were a little ambiguous in certain spots you had to go to board game geek to, to fill out some things um they're still even revamping it the rules of let's say the you know the, the psychopath for example um so that would have been there i wish the production of the cards and the artwork you know the artwork of the people are good but you know the cards the overboard cards the navigation cards they could have been you know they could have been some better artwork on there so production quality wasn't the best but it is a smaller publisher so you can't expect them to have days of wonder quality um and it, but it's a fun game it doesn't stop me from playing it it's a little quirky in that artwork but that's kind of what you know appeals to this is it is sort of a quirky different game so it won't make me not play it because it's there but if i had one thing to complain i would just wish the production value was better that the artwork was better but other than that Hey, great game. It's not going to stop me from playing it. If you like party type games, if you like negotiations, if you like stabbing your buddies in the back, you got to check out Lifeboat. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>